Welcome to the Happier and Healthier Podcast. I'm your host, Maria Marlowe, and this is a place where we don't rely on good luck or good genes for our health and happiness, but rather we create it with our thoughts and our actions each and every single day. Each week, I'll bring you a thought or a guest that will help you live your happiest and healthiest life. Are you ready? Welcome back. I'm your host, Maria Marlowe, and today we're talking all things health coaching. This episode is inspired by you guys because I get so many questions about becoming a health coach and what it's like to be a health coach. So I'm taking your questions and I'm turning it into an episode. And I hope that by the end of this episode, you'll be able to better decide if health coaching is a good career path for you. Now, remember, this podcast is for you. So if you have health and wellness questions or podcast topic ideas that you'd like me to address, you can send them to me on Instagram at Maria Marlowe, and Marlowe is spelled M-A-R-L-O-W-E, and you may hear the answer on an upcoming episode. Before we get started, check out these brands that make the Happier and Healthier podcast possible. Do you want to eat fresh, healthy, organic meals at home, but don't have the time to cook? Then you have to check out Saqqara, an organic, plant-based, gluten-free meal delivery service that will deliver chef-prepared meals straight to your door. Head to Saqqara.com and use code MariaMLove15 for 15% off your order. All the work is done for you, so you just have to open the package and eat or reheat. These are not frozen meals, but rather fresh made and delivered twice a week. It's sort of like having a personal chef without having to pay a personal chef's salary. Each meal is loaded with copious amounts of dark leafy greens, colorful veggies, and of course, tons of nutrients. This is great if you're on the go a lot, don't like to cook, or simply want to do a quick reset or food cleanse and would rather someone else do the prepping for you. Personally, I find their breakfast to be a bit on the light and sweet side, so I recommend going for their lunches and dinners and then doing either a smoothie or chia pudding or even a superfood scramble for breakfast. You can use the code MariaMLove15 on Saqqara.com, that's S-A-K-A-R-A.com to get 15% off your order. All right, let's get started talking health coaching, which is, in my opinion, one of the most rewarding and exciting careers in health and wellness that you could have. The cool thing about it is that you can take it in so many different paths. So, for example, I started my business as an actual health coach, health coaching people one-on-one, eventually adding group classes and then adding other offerings, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I just wanted to point out that the brand that I just mentioned, Saqqara, the organic meal delivery service, one of the founders also went to IIN. And she's a perfect example of someone who took their health coach education and turned it into something that is still helping people get healthy, but doing it in a way that is not necessarily one-on-one coaching. Because one-on-one coaching is not necessarily for everyone. Not everyone wants to do that. And some of us have different aspirations, which is perfect. We need we need people doing different things so we can help the world become a healthier place on many different levels. So after Danielle did a health coaching program, she did the same exact one that I did, which is the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. And she did the program and she was telling people to eat more vegetables and to get rid of the junk food. And she realized that was easier said than done, especially in a place like New York City where no one cooks, everyone's eating out. There's a lot of social events. So what she decided to do is she teamed up with a friend of hers, Whitney, and they started Saqqara as an organic meal delivery service where she said, okay, if you guys don't have the time to grocery shop and prep and cook or you don't want to do it, we'll do it for you. That way you still have access to these healthy meals. So they started this company in New York City, and now it's available nationwide. They have offices on the West Coast as well, and they're delivering to all 50 states, which is pretty Awesome. And that came from that spark and that inspiration from 
doing a health coach training program. So she's just one example. Sakara is just one example. There's many more examples of different ways you can take that. And we'll get into that. But first, let's just start with what the core of health coaching is. A health coach helps people achieve their health goals by advising and guiding them on how to change or improve their diet and their lifestyle habits. By lifestyle, I just mean things like stress or exercise, smoking, drinking, those kinds of things. Health coaches can work on their own or in tandem with a doctor, which is becoming more and more popular now as doctors really see the benefit in working with health coaches because a doctor can't see you every single day or get on the phone with you every single day when you have little small questions. But what they can do is they can say, your cholesterol is too high, you've got to lose 30 pounds, you're at risk for developing diabetes or heart disease, etc. And then they can re- recommend a health coach or refer you out to their health coach who will develop a specific plan that's going to help you reverse or prevent these issues through dietary and lifestyle changes. A health coach is going to be the one who holds your hand through the entire process, guiding and advising you, answering your questions, troubleshooting, and helping to ensure that you develop healthy habits that stick and you don't just embark on some sort of short-term diet, but that you really develop habits that will take you through a lifetime of health. And if you just think about the word coach or what a coach does, for example, with a sports team or a vocal coach, they are helping people bring out the best in themselves. And that's why all the celebrities and all the great athletes, they all have coaches in their area of expertise because they need someone to guide them, to give them feedback, to help them constantly improve and become their optimal self. I don't know about you, but I wish that I had a health coach or that my mom had a health coach when I was growing up so that she had someone to guide her and tell her what to feed us and what to send in our lunchbox. Or even that may be the reason we were always at the doctor's office with strep throat and ear infections, colds, flus, viruses, digestive issues because of what we were eating, because our diet was nutritionally bankrupt and we were only eating junk. Health coaches are so needed in today's day and age, and I firmly believe that we need more health coaches. So that's what a health coach is. Now, in terms of how health coaches are different from other nutrition professionals, I think there are a few key points or a few key things that they learn and are trained in that makes them different to other nutrition professionals. Health coaches are trained to help people change their habits, and I think that is what makes them unique compared to other nutrition professionals because they're not only learning about the nutrition and health and wellness, they're learning how to coach people to actually change their habits. I'm sure if you've ever been to any sort of nutrition professional before, maybe even your doctor and they gave you recommendations. They'll give you a list of things to eat and not to eat. That's great, but when it comes to 3 p.m. and you're craving sugar and there's a plate of brownies on your coworker's desk, what's gonna happen, right? It's a lot of times with nutrition and and eating, things are easier said than done. Where traditional nutrition professionals really fall short is they typically are telling you what to eat, but they're not educating you on what to eat. They're not giving you specific steps or techniques to break the bad habits and replace them with the good ones. How do you take what you're learning and put it into action? Because Knowing and doing are not the same thing. I think really everyone at this point in time knows that eating vegetables are good for you and junk food is not. But why do we have this epidemic of people not eating enough vegetables and eating way too much junk and processed foods? It's not that they don't know what to eat. It's that they can't figure out how to break the cravings and break the bad habits. So that's really in my mind one of the most important differentiators between health coaches and other nutrition professionals is that 
They're really trained in habit change and helping people go from knowing to doing. Another aspect of health coaching is that it's typically very holistic and you're looking at the person as a whole, mind, body, spirit, not just what's on their plate. Food is really tied to emotion, which is why it's so hard for many people to change the way they eat because of traditions and habits and these emotions. And I always say that People don't have food problems, they have emotional problems that are causing them to overeat or causing them to crave and eat junk food and processed foods, these emotions that are preventing them from taking good care of themselves. So even personally, just think about it. When do you crave sugary junk food the most? If you're like most people, it's probably when you're stressed It's probably when you're bored and in need of a distraction. It's probably when you're feeling lonely and maybe a little down. These are the times that we want to reach for comfort foods and that salty or sugary and fatty type foods that really are not great for us. When someone's eating when they're not actually hungry, they're typically eating because of emotions. They're trying to fill a void or soothe themselves, comfort themselves to counteract that emotion. So by ignoring this aspect of someone's food and health journey, you're leaving out a very big piece of the puzzle. And even if they change their habit for a short period of time and do incorporate more healthy foods and limit the unhealthy ones, over time, if they don't deal with that emotion, if they don't deal with that stress, the second that they feel it again, and especially if they're not working with you or they're not working with someone, they're going to go right back to their old habits and their old comfort foods. So you have to really teach people how to deal with those emotions in non-food ways and how to deal with stress and how do you address these issues so that when you do feel these feelings, because we all feel these feelings at different points in our life, they are going to come up again. How do you deal with them in non-food ways? So that is something that a health coach can help with. Health coaches are educators, and what I mean by that is they actually take the time to explain why you're making certain dietary changes instead of just telling you what to do. We all hate being told what to do, but when you explain to someone why and you make them see for themselves that certain foods make them feel better while others make them feel sick— it becomes much more powerful and that person is much more likely to stick to these new habits when they understand the why and they see the reason for themselves versus someone just told them to do it. In addition to being educators and habit changers, health coaches are also accountability partners and cheerleaders for their clients. We've all seen the statistics that you're more likely to stick to something, to stick to a goal when you tell other people about it because that gives you some accountability. By working with a health coach over a period of time, so a health coach is not someone you go to just once or twice and then that's it. You would typically work with a health coach over a period of months, maybe three, four, five, six months however long you need to reach your specific goals. And you'll meet with them at regular intervals, maybe once a week or every other week, depending on your needs. As you can see, health coaches are sorely needed and can be highly beneficial to anyone struggling with health issues, food issues, or just wants to eat a healthier diet. If you've made it this far in this episode, you understand that. And I would imagine that you probably had your own health epiphany and realized how powerful food is and why it really is our medicine. And that has what has gotten you interested in learning more about health coaching and helping other people to eat better and ultimately become their healthiest self. Some of you may also be looking into RD programs, which is a different route. And if you do decide to go the RD route, I would encourage you to also do the health coaching in tandem or one after the other, because you're going to learn two very different skill sets and two very different curriculums in each of them. 
Now, when you're deciding on a program, I think it's really important to choose one that is going to teach you unbiased nutrition information. What I mean by that is information that is not influenced by the food industry or the agricultural industry. Unfortunately, the USDA guidelines, which when I was growing up was the food pyramid and now it's my plate, are still politically and economically influenced. I come from a family where obesity, disease, and cancer are the norm, not the exception, and yet my family thought that they ate pretty healthy. They were more or less following the food pyramid, and we happily ate our 6 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, and pasta every single day as the food pyramid advised. The food pyramid was absolutely ingrained in my brain because it was on the back of all the cereal boxes in huge, huge print. And I used to stare at the back of the cereal box while I was rushing to shovel in three bowls of cereal every single morning, hoping to hit that 6 to 11 serving goal. And I just thought that it was scientific fact. It was published by the U.S. government, so why would it not be scientific? But little did I know that behind the scenes, there were a lot of nutrition researchers who were ringing the alarm bells and asking for the USDA to change those guidelines and update them based on the latest scientific research that suggested, well, for one, that we should not be eating 6 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, rice, or pasta every day. And long story short, the food pyramid has had a few iterations since then. It is now my plate. And each of these iterations is the result of nutrition scientists and researchers saying, you cannot tell the public to eat this way because that is why they're getting fat and sick. And so while the my plate is a big improvement over the pyramid, it is still not 100%. That is why Harvard Medical School, the number one medical school in the world, has published their own version of my plate called the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate. And they say right on their website, you could go check it out, we created this plate to teach the public how to eat healthfully and to give them guidelines that are not politically and economically influenced. In fact, the chairman of the nutrition department at Harvard is one of the visiting professors at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and you'll note that Harvard does not have an RD program. They have nutrition programs, but they do not have RD programs at Harvard. If you're interested in learning more about this, there's also a great book called Food Politics by Marian Nessel. She's a PhD and professor at NYU, who's also a visiting teacher at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. There's also a great website called Eat Drink Politics, which is run by Michelle Simon, who is a public health lawyer, and she has a lot of articles, research, and reports on ways that the food industry is in bed with the nutrition industry and is influencing public health in a negative way. There's one report in particular, I believe it's called, and now a word from our sponsors, and it's all about how the big food industry is sponsoring the uh, the AND, which is the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which is the body that certifies registered dietitians and creates their curriculum. So if you've now decided that you want to be a health coach, the next step is figuring out which health coach training program you want to do. When I first started, there were not that many options. I went to the original health coach training program. In fact, the program that I went to is the program that actually coined the term health coach. They were established almost 30 years ago and have been working so hard to make health coaching a household name, which it really, really is. I did the program in 2012, graduated in 2013. And back then, people still didn't really know what a health coach was. Now you fast forward to today, and health coaching has really become a household name. Doctors' offices have health coaches, wellness centers, food brands. Health coaches are opening up restaurants and starting uh, food products and spas and retreats and so much more, writing books and cookbooks. So Health coaching is has really just exploded in the past, I'd say, five years. Because of that, a ton of new health coaching programs have popped up that are just trying to cash in on this growing interest in health coaching. 
And the problem with many of them is that they don't have a great curriculum, they don't have a great caliber of teachers, and they're just not even long enough to really give you the skills that you need to health coach someone properly, but to also set up your own business and to start an actual career as a health coach instead of it just being a hobby or a side project. So I want to help you avoid those types of programs, but also help you make an informed decision. So if there is another program that you're looking into, I'm going to give you some food for thought and how do you assess that program to make sure that you're going to be getting the best education that you can. First and foremost, look for the caliber of teachers. Go through their website and really look at who's teaching their courses, who are they affiliated with. One reason that I love the Institute for Integrative Nutrition is because they have some of the most intelligent and forward-thinking nutrition and wellness experts in the world. I'm talking people like Dr. Andrew Weil, to people like Dr. Neil Bernard, who is the head of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and just so many more. There was just so many doctors and researchers and just people who are progressive in in terms of health and, and nutrition and really at the top of their game. These were the people that were teaching the classes. Uh, they've also had Deepak Chopra. They've had Gabby Bernstein talking about the mindset side of things. They've had Arianna Huffington talk about the, uh, again, sort of like the mindset and lifestyle side of things. So just a, a, an amazing group of people to learn from and be be connected with. So that's number one. You want to look for the caliber of teachers. You also want to look for how long they've been in business. And if it's just popped up in the last couple of weeks, I would say you probably want to let it run its course for for a little while before you jump in. You want to look for a program that's established and has a track record. You want to look at the graduates as well. Look up their successful graduates and see what they're doing. Um, of course, any site can have testimonials on, on the site and they could be real. I, I would hope they're all real, but you really want to dig a little bit deeper and actually look at what are their graduates doing. Go to their websites, check out their products, check out their services, check out their social media, see what they're doing and see if that's what you want to be doing and see if they have the level of success that you want to have. Some notable grads from my school include people like Danielle from Sakara, who created or co-created the organic plant-based meal delivery service, which is now nationwide, which is awesome and counts a number of celebrity clients. There is Elizabeth Stein of the company Purely Elizabeth, which you may have seen in Whole Foods or Bed Bath & Beyond, or I think she's also in Costco and so many different food retailers across the country. She started making a healthier granola that was sweetened with coconut sugar instead of regular sugar back, I want to say probably at least in 2012 or or maybe even before that she started the company and has just achieved massive success with the company since then there is a restaurant owner in Florida a, a restaurant called Green Bar Kitchen which is actually amazing she is a IIN grad there are IIN grads who are podcast hosts who are cookbook authors who are regular book authors there are IIN grads who lead retreats and who do one-on-one -on -one coaching at doctor's offices or with through their own business and just so much more. So definitely take some time to dig a little and find a program that has graduates who are actually successful and doing something with their education. You, of course, want to look at the curriculum for a program, and I will link to the curriculum for IIN so you can check that out a little bit deeper for yourself. But look at what kind of classes they're teaching you, what topics they're talking about. And what I liked about IIN was that there is a mix of nutrition a mix of coaching and a mix of business. So by 
giving you all three areas, you really finish the program very well-rounded and able to hit the ground running because not only do you have the nutrition coaching knowledge, but you know how to establish a business if that's what you want. And I think a lot of people who go through the program do want to start their own business. So it's really important to have that knowledge of establishing yourself, establishing a foundation and marketing yourself is really, really helpful and important. Now, some health coaches want to go through the program and work for a doctor's office or some sort of other company where they can just get hired and they don't have to worry about starting their own business. That's totally fine. There are a number of businesses and especially doctor's offices that are now hiring health coaches on staff. So a few examples just in New York would be Parsley Health and Dr. Frank Lippman's office. Another factor to look at is the length of the program. There are some programs that I've seen that are only a few weeks or a couple months, two, maybe three months. And I really don't think that's sufficient to get an entire education on holistic nutrition and coaching and business. So I would look for programs that are at a minimum six months, if not a year, because that will allow you the time to learn, to absorb, to practice, and to put things into action instead of just rushing through it and missing things and doing things sort of sloppily and and not really getting all the information that you need. So if you're looking into a few different health coaching programs, I would use those factors that I mentioned to compare them and then ultimately make your decision. Personally, I still always recommend the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, which is where I studied. I feel that it does have the best teachers, the best curriculum, and really sets you up for success. Having been asked about different health coaching programs so many times, I have researched and looked into other ones. And if I found a better one, I would, of course, let you guys know, but I still feel like they are for sure the front runner. I believe in the program so much that I still mentor new health coaches. So if you're thinking about enrolling and you want to be mentored by me and get some free business coaching, free mentorship, be sure to send me an email at info at mariamarlow.com. And we can make sure to get you set up for that. You can also ensure that you are added to my mentorship program by just mentioning on the phone when you do enroll that you want to add me, Maria Marlowe, as your ambassador referral. And you will automatically be added into my mentorship program. Plus, you will get $1,500 off of tuition. Now, the great thing about the Institute for Integrative Nutrition is that it is 100% online. So you can... Do it really on your own schedule. I will say you definitely need to schedule it into your calendar and make sure you set a certain amount of hours each week to dedicate to the program, to watching the videos and the lectures and doing the homework and assignments because you don't want to fall behind on your work. And they do release a new module every single week. So you just want to make sure that you're carving out that time and treating it as if it were a real in-person class that you had to meet at and go to every week versus uh, just kind of doing it whenever you get the time because we all know when we don't put something on our calendar, it doesn't end up happening. So my number one piece of advice for going through the program is to schedule your class time into your calendar and stick to it. Don't let anything else, don't schedule anything else during your class time. Also, if you're wondering whether you can do the course while you're working full time, the answer is yes, absolutely. That's what I did and that's what most people do because it is so flexible and because it's less than part-time hours, it is possible to fit it into your schedule relatively easily when you're working full time. In fact, if you hate your job, it's an excellent way to add a little bit more excitement to your day and to add something to look forward to. I know for me, it made the days go by so much faster because I was so excited to go home and to dive into the modules or to start working on my website. I also found that I was extremely productive during this time, even though I had less hours, right, than if I was doing it full time. I knew that I only had X hours of a week to work on either school or my business, my website. And so I used those hours much more productively and much more efficiently. I think it's really important just 
and life in general to be really organized, to write lists, and then to prioritize those lists, then stay focused on achieving those tasks. When you stay focused, that allows you to get so much done. And it's really important that we avoid the perfection paralysis and we avoid distraction when we're trying to get something done. Now, in terms of different income streams, when you first start out as a health coach, typically you are going to health coach people one-on-one. And I always tell people that no matter what your ultimate goals are, that you should really start off coaching people one-on-one at least for for at minimum a year, if not a couple years, before you really branch into other things or especially like group programs, for example, because you need to know how to work with one person first before you can handle an entire group. And you really need to understand what people need and want and where they need help, what they're looking for before you can go and design bigger group programs that are going to be really effective and that people are going to want to sign up for. So one-on-one, starting with one-on-one, I think is really great because that will also allow you just to Notice the pain points and maybe even we'll give you an idea for some other type of business down the line or or service down the line that you can offer that will allow you to really scale up your business very quickly. When you're starting out, you can, of course, get clients on your own through your own advertising and website and social media. But A way that will help you get clients more quickly is by partnering or teaming up with other health and wellness professionals who can send you referrals. So for example, doctors would be great, especially functional or integrative medicine doctors, but even traditional MDs now are referring out to health coaches. And in some cases, they're hiring them a few days a week, two, three days a week, or even five days a week. So that's one option, partnering with trainers or fitness studios, gyms, that can be a great place to get referrals from chiropractors. Even your hairdresser can be a great source of referrals because she's probably sitting around and, you know, women are always talking about the diets and nutrition and weight and all those sorts of things. So she could even be a great source of referrals. So make sure that you do let everyone know what you're up to and what you have to offer because you never know where a new client can come from. So most people start with one-on-one, which is what I did as well. And then I eventually started doing a group class, which was in person. And I held this multiple times a week. Well, I mean, the first time I only held it once a week. But as it started getting more popular, I had a few different sessions so that I could have more people in, in the program as a total. And so that is another option. Now I eventually moved that group program online, which you can also do. Doing a group program really makes a lot of sense financially, both for you and for your clients, because for you, you're earning more money, and for your clients, they're getting an amazing service at a lower price point. So it's really a win-win for both of you. Another way to make money as a health coach is to get into corporate wellness. In 2019, corporations are waking up and realizing that happy and healthy employees are more productive employees. So they're willing to spend money on different wellness initiatives. In fact, their health insurance companies are often now giving them a stipend or a budget for wellness programming. And that wellness programming can include a lunch and learn by a health coach or some sort of nutrition information session. Maybe it's a weight loss program. Maybe it's some sort of class, a cooking class after work. I've seen some health coaches only specialize in corporate wellness, and that is their sole source of income, which is one way you can take it, or you can include corporate wellness as one of your many different income streams. The way to get into corporate wellness is to start networking with people in the HR department because they are typically going to be the ones that would be hiring the wellness professionals for these types of events. So if you work for a corporation now, you might want to even start by talking to your own HR. You can also earn money by writing a book or a cookbook. Now, both of these are not huge money makers. In fact, you'll probably spend a lot of time and money and effort on them, uh, maybe even more than you actually get out of it. But what makes writing a book so valuable is that you can then leverage that book to get more press and media attention and also to get speaking gigs. 
as a first-time author, you can expect to get anywhere between a few thousand dollars and tens of thousands of dollars for your first book. The more followers you have, the more your advance is going to be. And that's why I always suggest to people to focus on their social media. It's sort of a I don't want to say it's a necessary evil. It's not evil. I know that there's a lot of anxiety around it um, and resistance around it, but it's just think of it just as a tool that is going to allow you to reach more people and to grow your business, right? And if you have information that can help people and that can change their lives and improve their lives, it is your duty to share that information. And one of those ways that we do that is through social media. So it is important for so many reasons to not neglect your social media. Once your book is out, that's when you start to use it as leverage to get media. And The media always wants to write about new books or new ideas. So if you pitch it to different publications or TV shows or wherever, if they pick it up and you get featured, well, then you may be getting new clients through that or new book sales through that. So that is a way that it sort of indirectly increases your income. Another way to leverage it, uh, like I said, is through public speaking. And those initial, first initial public speaking events that you do, you may not get paid, but that's okay because, again, those people in the audience may turn into clients. So even though you didn't get paid for doing the talk, you just signed on a few clients that are going to be worth a few thousand dollars. As you start establishing yourself as a speaker and growing your following, then you can start charging for your talks. You can start giving talks at different conferences or health and wellness events, and you'll actually get paid to speak, which is pretty awesome. As you keep continue going up the ranks, you can even sign up with a speaking agency, so you're getting speaking gigs more often. If you have a large following, you can even start advertising your own events. You can organize them yourself and give a talk at a local studio or some local space that you rent or hopefully get donated for free and you can charge a ticket price. As an alternative to a nutrition lecture, you can offer a cooking class at a local grocery store or kitchen store that has a working kitchen. And you can of course charge for that class. Now, if you don't like cooking, you don't have to include cooking in any of your services. This is a question I get quite frequently. Do you have to be a good cook to be a health coach? And the answer is absolutely not. Many people who go into health coaching do end up liking to cook because food is such a big part of their life. But if it's cooking is not your thing, that is completely fine. You can recommend recipes, websites, and cookbooks to your clients without having to actually make the recipes yourself. Some other ways that you can start earning money as a health coach is working with different food brands. Brands can hire you to create recipes with their products or maybe just talk about the health benefits of their products on your blog or on your social media. And this is where the power of social media comes in and why it is so important in this day and age to establish a social media following, establish a great website and blog and email list. The more followers that you have, the more opportunities that are going to arise for you. That goes both for working with other brands and other partnership opportunities. So for example, a book, but it also goes for your own services. The bigger your following is and the more people who like, trust, and respect you, that's typically going to translate into more clients or customers. Now, of course, you only want to work with brands that you would use personally and actually recommend to people and that you trust because you don't want to break anyone's trust, right? If you recommend a product that's really not very good or not healthy and is not in line with your philosophy, then you're going to break your trust with your audience. So you, of course, never want to do that. No matter how much they're going to pay you, say no and seek out those partnerships with companies that you feel aligned with. Other possible income streams as a health coach is hosting retreats. Some graduates have went on to start restaurants or food businesses like the Saqqara Organic Meal Delivery or a packaged product that's sold in grocery stores. And I think what you can maybe get a sense of by hearing all these different paths and 
hearing about some of the success stories of different graduates is that IAN does a really good job of inspiring you and lighting a fire under your ass to actually put into action what you're learning. So as I said earlier, one of the main roles of a health coach is to turn their client's knowledge into action. And that's really what IIN does for its students. It teaches them all of this amazing knowledge about holistic nutrition and coaching and business, but it also, it, it just doesn't stop there. It gives you that spark that you will put into action what you're learning and that you will make a difference in this world. You're not going to just take what you learned and use it for yourself. You're actually going to use it for the betterment of other people as well. As far as what to expect, when you sign up for IAN, each week you will receive a new module or a new module will open up, which has a series of videos and lessons that you can watch on your own time. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, make sure to schedule that time into your calendar so that it gets done. And so you'll watch the videos or you can also listen if you're not, if you don't want to sit and and watch the videos, you can also listen. They have them as audio files and there is homework or things that you have to practice. So for example, health histories that you can practice with other health coaching students and there could also be recommendations for other documentaries to watch or books to read. So I would recommend reading as many additional books and watching as many additional documentaries as possible because just the more knowledge you have, the better, uh, not just for yourself, but you know, as a health coach, you want to really be exposed to as much knowledge as you can get your hands on. So I really encourage setting aside the time each week so that you have enough time to explore not just IIN, but if there's a teacher that you like and they have a book get the book. If there is a documentary that someone mentions that's really interesting, check it out on Netflix or find it on YouTube and just feed yourself with as much knowledge as you possibly can during the program. Additionally, connect with other health coaches. One of the most wonderful things about IIN is the community that they've built. And there is this real family-like feeling amongst graduates of IIN and alumni. So, One excellent piece of advice I can give you is go hang out in the Facebook group. IAN will put you in different Facebook groups with a small amount of of people. I don't know how many. I want to say maybe 50 people are in them. It's a smaller subset of the people in the entire class so that you can actually get to start to know people, uh, find people in your region locally that you could potentially even meet up with in person that you can practice with or do the lessons with or whatever. And just having a sense of community, having people to practice with and do it with and also to be accountable with is is really helpful. So I would encourage you guys to connect with people in the program as much as possible. And even though it is an online program, you'd be surprised at how many people you'll actually end up meeting and becoming friends with and maybe even working with down the line. When I did the program, there was only one option, which is the one-year program, but now IAN offers an accelerated six-month program, so you're still getting all the same content, but your work is basically doubled each week, so this would be better for someone who is maybe in between careers or is a teacher and has the summer off or what was, is a student and has the summer off. This would be a better option because it will be quite a bit of work, or if you are a glutton for punishment and you have a full-time job, but you just want to finish quicker, you can then, of course, also do the accelerated program. Just know that you really have to schedule sufficient time into your calendar to make sure that you're absorbing everything and not falling behind. Now, once you complete your studies and pass all your tests, you can apply to become a board-certified health coach through the American Academy of Drugless Practitioners. You can also apply up to 40 credits at a number of different uh, accredited colleges across the country to put towards either a bachelor or a master's nutrition degree if you want to further your studies. And I will say that there are a number of 
doctors who become health coaches, RDs who become health coaches, chefs who become health coaches, and people who have complementary professions who also decide to do that health coach certification just to add that extra layer and that extra knowledge that will help them better serve their patients and clients. So if everything that I've been talking about sounds exciting and fun to you, and you really do want to turn your passion for health and wellness into a fulfilling career, then I highly encourage you to check out the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. I believe in the school and the graduates and even mentor new health coaches through their ambassador program. So if you're ready, when you call to enroll, be sure to mention that you want to add Maria Marlowe as your ambassador referral and you'll get $1,500 off of tuition, and you'll also be added into my mentorship program. So I can mentor and business coach you throughout your entire course to help you set up a really strong business foundation and start getting clients. If you have any questions or you just want to let me know that you enrolled, please send me an email at maria at mariamarlow.com. And Marlow is M-A-R-L-O-W-E.